analog sensors are different than digital sensors in that they can, theoretically, measure an arbitrarily small change in the physical quantity that they measure. Now, this turns out to not be actually or practically true, both because of limitations due to physics, but also due to something called analog to digital conversion. The embedded controller that we use to read sensors and control actuators is a digital controller. In other words, we read analog sensors by approximating the analog value that is coming in and storing the value as a digital number. Let's learn about this by doing an example. This device here is a potentiometer. It is an analog sensor for measuring rotational position. A potentiometer is a variable resistance sensor. Inside, it has a strip of resistive material that stretches between these two outer pins. If we use a multimeter to read the resistance between these two pins, the resistance is constant. When you buy a potentiometer, the resistance quoted on the data sheet for the potentiometer tells you the resistance that is constant between the two outer pins. Now, there is a little piece of conductive material called a wiper attached to this dial. As we turn the dial, the wiper slides left and right. As the wiper slides closer to one of the outer pins, the resistance between the center pin and that outer pin decreases. As the wiper slides farther away from one of the outer pins, the resistance between the center pin and that outer pin increases. Now we can connect the potentiometer to our PSOC like this. First, find the male to female jumper wires included in your kit and peel them apart so that you have three of them. Press the female end onto the three leads of the potentiometer like this. Now we are going to set up a circuit that is called a voltage divider. In a voltage divider circuit, we use two resistors to reduce the voltage in a circuit like this. If we put a voltage in here and we connect ground over here, then the voltage here in the middle can be calculated using Ohm's law. it will always be less than or equal to the voltage put in. Now, if we hook up the potentiometer with one outer pin to VDD of the PSOC and the other outer pin to ground and the wiper pin, that is the center pin, to 1.4 of the PSOC, we have made a voltage divider where both of the resistances in the circuit are changing. R1 plus R2 is always the maximum resistance for the whole potentiometer. But the individual values of R1 and R2 change between uh, approximately zero ohms and the maximum resistance of the potentiometer. When R1 is zero ohms, the voltage at the pin will be five volts. When R1 is the maximum resistance, such as 10 kilo ohms, 
the voltage at the pin will be zero volts. As we turn the dial, the voltage at the pin will change continuously. Now, to read this value, we need to convert it to a digital number. Here's how this works. First, in your PSOC code, open up the sensors project that we were working on last time. Here, find an analog to digital converter block in the top design and drag one to the screen. The analog to digital converter block is in the analog menu, then in the ADC submenu. ADC stands for analog to digital converter. The block we want is called sequencing SAR ADC. This is a block that you can use to read multiple analog sensors efficiently. We are only going to use it to read one sensor, but if you learn how to use this block now, you can easily use the same approach in the future to expand to multiple sensors. Now double click on the block. First, change the number of channels to one. Channels is the number of sensors you are going to read. In this case, we are going to only read one sensor. Next, click on the input range. When we convert an analog value to a digital value, we need to know what is the minimum and maximum value that the analog value might have. Here's why. A digital value is stored in a number of bits, giving a maximum value that that digital value could possibly have. For example, suppose that you are going to store this digital value in a single 8-bit value known as a byte. Each bit in the byte could have a value of either 0 or 1. The rightmost bit, which is also known as the least significant bit, is worth either 0 or 1. If the bit is 0, it converts the value to 0. If it is 1, it converts to the value 1. The next rightmost bit is worth either 0 or 2. If the bit is 0, it converts to 0. If the bit is 1, it converts to 2. The next bit is worth 0 or 4. The next bit, 0 or 8, and so on. We can figure out the total value of any combination of zeros and ones by adding up the values of all of the bits that have a 1. For example, suppose we have a combination of ones and zeros like this. Now we can figure out the value of this byte like this. Now the largest value that this 8-bit byte could possibly have is all 1's like this. This number so we by adding out the up all the value of this number by adding up all of the values of the individual bits like this. And we get 255. So the largest value that this 8 bit byte could possibly have is 255. Now Suppose we know that our analog value can be anywhere between 0 volts and 5 volts. That means that if the voltage is 0 volts, we want it to convert to the digital value 0. And if the voltage is 5 volts, we want it to convert to the digital value 255. On the other hand, if we know ahead of time that the analog value will range between 0 volts and 10 volts, in that case, we want 0 volts to convert to the value 0, and we want 10 volts to convert to the digital value 255. In this case, we would want 5 volts to convert to the digital value 127 instead. 
So we need to know and specify ahead of time what is the expected range of the analog value. In this drop-down list, some of the options say single-ended and some say differential. Single-ended means that you want to read just a single voltage input compared to ground. Differential means that you are going to provide two voltage inputs and you want to read the difference between them as the input. In our case, we just want to read one input relative to ground, so we'll select one of the single-ended options. Also, we know that our voltage is going to range between zero volts and the voltage provided by VDD of the PSOC. So select here the option VSSA to VDDA. That means that our voltage is going to range between the ground voltage and the VDD voltage. Next, up here you get to select the resolution. When we were learning about encoders, we learned that resolution refers to the smallest change in the physical property that the sensor can detect. With the encoders, the resolution was a property of the sensor itself, the counts per revolution or pulses per revolution of the encoder. This is generally true of all digital sensors. The resolution is a property of the sensor with analog sensors, it's different. The resolution is a property of how you read the sensor, not a property of the sensor itself. To see how this works, let's look back at our 8-bit example. Suppose that the analog value ranges between 0 and 5 volts, and we are storing the digital value in an 8-bit byte. We know that if the analog input is zero volts, we want to have the digital output be zero. Then, if the analog value increases, at some point, we want the digital output to switch to one, and then later to two, and then three, and then four, and so on, as the analog input increases. So, at what voltage value should the digital value switch to one? We could think of this problem as a graph, like this. The x-axis here is the voltage input, and the y-axis is the digital output. The x-axis goes from 0 volts to 5 volts, and the y-axis goes from 0 to 255. Since the analog value could be anything, but the digital value can only be integers, our conversion looks like a stair step. Any input between zero and something else gets converted to zero. Then it gets converted to one. Then a higher value gets converted to two. And a higher yet value gets converted to three and so on. So we have a total of 256 different values here between 0 and 255. So if we divide 5 volts by 256, we can get this value. Let's call it Q. Q stands for quantization, which is basically what we're doing here. Anything between 0 and Q will convert to the digital value 0. Any analog value between Q and 2Q will convert to the digital value 1. Any value between 2Q and 3Q will convert to the digital value 2, and so on. So our resolution for measuring voltage is Q volts. Now, suppose that our potentiometer can turn from 0 degrees to 180 degrees, and that this is what changes the voltage between 0 and 5 volts. We can now convert the resolution in volts to a resolution in degrees, like this. Okay, now, suppose that instead of reading the analog value with 8 bits, 
we write it with 10 bits instead. In this case, the y-axis goes from 0 to 2 to the 10th. Our q value is now much smaller, like this. Also, our angle resolution is now much smaller as well. Or, suppose we read the value into a 12-bit digital value. In this case, our Q is 12. And our angle resolution is Back now in our PSOC code, note that we can choose a resolution of 8, 10, or 12 bits. Let's stick with 12 bits for now. Click OK. Now, find an analog pin and wire it to the input. In the pins window, let's assign this pin to 1, 4. Now, go to the C code. We need to start the ADC block. Start the conversion process. We need to tell the analog to digital converter not to give us a result until the conversion is complete. Then, we need to read the value into a variable. Let's make this variable an int. Finally, let's display the value to the LCD screen. Now, plug in the PSOC and program it. Try turning the potentiometer. What's the minimum and maximum value that you see on the screen. Do you understand why this is the minimum and maximum value that you get? Now that you know how to wire up and use one type of variable resistance sensor, you can apply this knowledge to read many other types of variable resistance sensors and even other types of analog sensors that are not variable resistance. In the next video, we'll look at a couple of other types of variable resistance sensors.